Stéphane est professeur du Collège de France. Thanks. And I'm going to speak about data. So uh, first, I have to thank you because I'm really pleased to be here for the occasion of uh, this honorary degree for Martin. Uh, I know him for a long, long time. And I think it's quite spectacular that such a remarkable scientist ends up being a president in a university. I mean, it's really something that would be great to see more often in France. And I'm very happy for my Swiss friends that they have such a luck of having someone like that be the president of their university. So I'm not going to speak about big problems. I'm going to speak about uh, core, uh, somewhat, uh, uh, narrow scientific problem, which is about data, but it's also about physics. The Nobel Prize in Physics apparently was Parry, who is a statistical physics, uh, remarkable researcher. So I'm going to speak about statistical physics also today and convolutional networks. So one dream, because still I have dreams despite looking at data, in physics was to understand turbulence and is still to understand turbulence. Can we describe the probability distribution, the structure of turbulence? Uh, that's what I'm going to speak about, but I'm also going to speak about uh, classification. So ImageNet, you know that kind of database, you have these incredibly diverse structure from mushrooms to dogs and so on and you have these deep networks which are able to recognize them. What I would like to do today is to relate both problems, and obviously they are related by the fact that high dimensional learning is fundamentally about learning high dimensional distribution. In the first case, it would be the distribution of turbulence. In the second case, it will be uh, the pro conditional probabilities of class tables given uh, the, the data that you have. So, oops. I need to have some maybe help to know how to move the slides. Uh, okay, how do we, first of all, let me put that in, uh, Plein écran. Tu connais ton système de ce que je euh, Comment on le met en plein écran ah, Le mot est en plein écran, mais en fait. Ok. Euh... Une largeur. Okay, super. Okay, so we are going to look at deep neural networks. Uh, I suppose most of you know the structures and the impact of these deep neural networks. I'm here illustrating such a network uh, in the case of image classification. So you have an input image, you have a succession of linear convolutional operators and nonlinearities which are applied to each output, which are ROLU. And then you see the succession of linear operators that are applied along each channel to build the next layer and so on until the last layer where you have a linear combination which actually is able to compute the conditional probability or estimate the conditional probability of a label given the data. And the principle of this kind of classifier is to select the uh, index or the label which has the highest probability. So the way these systems are typically trained is with maximum likelihood algorithms, which are going to try to optimize the weight in order to maximize the probability of observing the labels associated to the data. So these structures gives you exceptional results for many different type of problems, image, sounds, classification, regression in physics, natural language analysis, and so on. And one central question is to interpret these architecture and to understand 
the underlying mathematics, which in this case is about understanding what classes of probability distributions can be approximated. So that's for classification. The second type of problem I'd look at uh, about uh, modeling still concerns deep networks. So what has been observed is that one can synthesize textures very close to turbulence uh, with the following strategy that's coming out of a paper by the network and the layers and the correlation between images within the layers. They have a whole series of correlation coefficients and then they synthesize images having the same correlation matrix. And what they observe is that if you train the correlation matrix with a texture, you recover a texture which is or bubbles or structures coming from ergodic uh, stationary processes. So the question is, what kind of mathematical interpretation again can we have for such phenomena? In the talk, I'm going to look at the two problem from an angle. What I'm going to show is that there are close relations between these kind of architecture and renormalization group in statistical physics, and that by using that kind of strategy, you can discover uh, properties of physics and at the same time understand that kind of well concerns classification and how that kind of tools allows to simplify these neural nets and begin to get an idea of what's happening within these different layers. So the statistical point of view on uh, estimating probability distributions it's basically the expected value of some quantity that are right here, phi k of x. So basically, you are computing an expected value. And if you want to build a model of the phenomena, what you're going to try to do is to find a probability distribution which reproduces the same in other words, moments are equal to the moments of the true probability distribution. And since you have no other information, you'll try to compute the probability distribution which satisfy these constraints and have a maximum entropy, which is given here by the integral of P log P. Now, you are having here an optimization problem, complex uh, entropy with linear equality. And in order to solve that, you set up your multipli uh, Lagrange multipliers, and you prove that the probability distribution has to be the exponential of a linear combination of your moment function, and the linear combinations are precisely the Lagrange multiplier. So what that shows, and that's the basis of Boltzmann, is that in terms of these Gibbs parameters. The difference is that if you have the Gibbs parameter in physics, basically you know about coupling, interaction, forces. And what we're going to try to understand is when you have such a problem, the moments that you should use in order to compute an approximation of your distribution. And hopefully, that's what is being done by a neural network. OK, so ultimately, what we want to do is to compute an approximation of your probability distribution. And of your moment function. In other words, it's really about linearly approximating a log probability distribution. And the basis that you need to choose, which are these moments, 
needs to be chosen depending upon prior information that you have. translated, okay, for a given translation K that defines a second order moment. If you impose a second order moment, you're going to get this distribution. Now, if you do that on problems such as turbulence, that's what you get. These are the Gaussian models. They have exactly the same second order distribution. And obviously you haven't captured all the structure and all uh, the geometry of the problem. So the problem translates into how to capture this non-Gaussianity property. Wait, I showed you the kind of images. The question is why? Okay, if you again take a point of view of a physicist, you are having a probability distribution which involves many, many scales. So the probability distribution is written as the exponential of the energy. Second order moment, but also some scalar potential which describe the probability distribution, some sense of each of the points of the field that you are considering. Now, if you vary the parameter, the field can have very different properties, can go through phase transition, extremely regular with long range uh, interactions. You should look at the field at different resolution. In other words, the image at different resolution by averaging, subsampling, averaging, subsampling. For each resolution, you are going to look at the probability distribution of the lower resolution field. And then look at is the way the energy falls across scale. The scale J minus one and the energy at the scale J. In physics, people have a tendency to decompose that in polynomials and very quickly it becomes extremely difficult. At a phase transition, what happens is that these energy don't depend upon the scale anymore. They are equal at all scales. I'm not going to we allow you to recover the original image from the lower resolution. Then you do the same thing. The lower resolution image goes into an even lower resolution with that coefficients and so on. So the details, I'm going to write it as delta as the field to go to the higher resolution. So the idea will be, and that's the work we did with Giro Biroli, who happened to be a student of Parisi in a long time ago, Thierry Marchand and uh, uh, Ozawa. And what we're going to do is to translate the group, the renormalization group in wavelet terms. The idea is the following. The probability of this field is the same than the joint probability of the lower resolution field and, sorry, the wavelet coefficients. So that's the joint. I can write it, I'm sorry, as the probability distribution of the wavelet coefficient bias theorem given low resolution multiplied by the low resolution field. So here's the low resolution field. These are the wavelet coefficients. Now, the low resolution field, I can sub decompose it in the low resolution field and its wavelet coefficient, which amounts to say a probability distribution. You can write it as a product of conditional distribution of the high frequency wavelet coefficient given the low frequency coefficient up to the last layer 
well, you'll get a very low resolution field, which is essentially Gaussian. Now, if you probability distribution, what are they? They are basically the interactions between resolutions through a Gibbs energy. Then you can recover the original probability distribution as a sum of interaction at all scales. What I'm going to show is that once you get this principle, you can build neural networks. Okay. The first thing I'm going to show is that with this, you can discover new physics. Discovering new physics is about learning the energy. Once you have the energy, you have access to forces and everything. The way we are going to do it is not by trying to learn the energy directly, which is very unstable, but by learning interaction terms. And we use a standard physical model, which involves second order moments and scalar potential. We applied that to cosmology, which is images of distribution of masses in the universe at very, very large scale. And you can recover by estimating at each particular scale the parameters of the interaction a models for these cosmological images. What I mean by model here is that we exactly have the we can estimate the parameter of the Gibbs energy and therefore have access to the forces and all the physical interactions. If you translate that in a network, you have the wavelet transform, which is shown here. Basically, what you are learning are just the connection between the different images at a given layer. The problem is that that kind of models are not sufficient to reach complex phenomena such as turbulence. To get turbulent phenomena, you need to go to a higher order. The problem is that when you look at these wavelet coefficients, they are non-correlated because they belong to different frequency bands. If you want to incorporate correlation to express their dependency, you need to eliminate the phase and therefore kill the phase with a modulus or an absolute value, which builds large correlation matrix. And these large correlation matrices, you essentially diagonalize them by reapplying a wavelet transform. So what that gives on a network is you compute the first wavelet transform. Each image is going to be subdecomposed by computing its wavelet transform, and then you renormalize all these images as in the normalization group so that they have a variance one, and you compute the correlations horizontally between these different coefficients. So that exactly proceeds as in the normalization group, and then you get these correlation coefficients, you compute the Gibbs energies, and you can see whether you reproduce complex textures such as turbulence models. That's what was done with colleagues in uh, cosmology, uh, Joanne Bruna, Steven Zong also, and Erwan Alice, uh, Joanne Bruna being in New York. And you can indeed, with these Gibbs energies, recover uh, realizations of these random processes. In the interest of time, I'd like to move to show how all that relates to classification. So in classification, you essentially have the same kind of problem, but you don't want to approximate the probability distribution of the data. What you want is to approximate the probability distribution of the class given the data. And how are you going to find the class? By choosing the class which, maxima which maximizes this conditional probability distribution. So let's use the same principle. You take an image, you expand it at different scales, the way it is, and then each image is redecomposed after applying a nonlinearity into its wavelet coefficients. Then, in this case, because you want to get the estimation from the last layer coefficients, we're going to propagate all coefficients 
by making an averaging and a subsampling, and that's what is called the scattering transform. So if you do something like this, with no interactions across the channels, you are going to get a classifier, but which has a limited performance. So at the time, that's what we did uh, with uh, Joan Brunat. So you build your network, which is just a cascade of spatial convolutions. You can study their properties, stability to diffeomorphism, and you can verify that that kind of networks capture information about spatial variability, about deformations, and therefore you will do well on simple problems such as digit classifications or simple texture classification. You do basically as well as a deep net, which has learned. However, when you move to complex problems, such as image net, a uh, deep net will have an error of the order of 10% when its depth is about 20, whereas these kind of strategy will have an error which is much bigger, about four times bigger. So one question that we had been asking for a long time is what is being learned in such a situation. Basically, what you need is to do the same kind of thing that you do when you learn a probability distribution. You need to understand the interaction of images between the different scale. And in this case, it means relate all the coefficient at a given position across these different images at a given layer. In this case, we have no information about the physics, so we are going to learn these operators, and that amounts to learn a 1-1 one -one convolutional operator, which basically specifies the interaction between these coefficients. And then you again subdecompose with your wavelet coefficients. And exactly as in the renormalization group models that I showed for cosmology or turbulence, we are going to learn the interaction terms between the different layers. Then you subdecompose, you learn the interaction term between the different layers up to the last layer. So basically, what you're building here is a neural network where all the spatial filters are known, they are wavelets, the only thing that you learn are the interaction terms at a given uh, layer, and you do that at each layer. So if you translate that in terms of a visual neural network language, you would see your wavelet convolutions, the nonlinearity, and then a convolution along the channels, just the one-one convolution that means that you don't do any spatial extension linear combination, wavelet combination along channels, and so on. And these are the potential that you are learning. So what does that give? If you work with the scattering transform where there is no connection across scale, as I mentioned, your error is about four times bigger than residual uh, neural networks whether you do that with these small CIFAR images or on ImageNet. The day you learn this potential across these different uh, images at each layer of the network, you reach the precision of ResNet. Although the neural net doesn't learn the spatial filter, and in fact the depth is smaller than the ResNet filter. So that shows that we are in a very, very similar situation than in these renormalization group uh, approximation of probability distribution. The key question now is what are the mathematical properties of these interaction potential? And in the case of the physical problem that I showed before, for example, cosmology, you can relate these filters to gravity, for example, because the way masses evolve in the universe is essentially driven by the property of gravity. In this case, the key question is to understand the nature of these probability, these, sorry, these kernels. And that's an open problem. 
So let me finish with these few remarks. The first one is that, from my point of view, theory of deep networks is essentially about building theory of high dimensional probability distribution. And that problem is at the core of statistical physics. This is why the two problems are studied by people who uh, sometimes have both point of views. But this is also why you find many common problems between what is being studied with these neural networks and the type of problems that are studied in physics. The second observation is that these neural nets are organized in cascade of filtering, subsampling, filtering, and subsampling. This is not by chance. They are building these multi-scale representation, and that's exactly what you do in physics when you have a problem which is complex, which involves many scales. And in that case, what you do is you build each scale, and you understand what is the nature of the interaction. If you think in pure computational terms, the reason why you do that is that otherwise the problem is incredibly unstable. When you compute your Gibbs distribution with MCMC algorithm, it will not converge because it's very badly conditioned. Whereas in the kind of experiments that I showed previously, we did use MCMC algorithm and it converges relatively fast because the computations are well conditioned. So what's the dream precisely? The dream precisely is now to be able to really specify the class of probability distribution. Right now, we are in a situation in math where on one hand, you have Gaussian probability distribution. In physics, people have tried to move away from Gaussian probability distribution by looking at high order moments. And that's essentially a failure because the space grows much too fast and you can't estimate these probability distribution. What these deep networks seems to indicate is that there is a different way to build these approximation. Instead of going to high order moments, cascade more nonlinearities. And what I showed is that with one nonlinearity, you can capture basically relatively simple cosmological distribution. With two nonlinearity, you begin to grab distribution which looks like at least turbulently. And with more distribution, with more nonlinearity, you reach phenomena such as these complex patterns in uh, ImageNet. Mathematically, it's not understood, but numerically, that seems to work. Thanks very much. Thank you.